Hello and welcome to the Performers Who Pivot podcast brought to you by your host Grace Francis. This podcast is for actors and performers who are navigating two careers at the same time. Maybe one performing arts career and one business to fall back on, or a business to have alongside your performing arts career, or perhaps you want to leave the performing arts industry altogether but don't want to retrain, so you are exploring how to progress using the skills you already have. On today's episode, we have Ebony, Ebony Taylor. Welcome, Ebony. Hi. Hi. Ebony um, is the founder of Youthful Arcs Expressions. She's also a performer, very young as well. And I love hearing the stories of our young artists who are creating and crafting their life of navigating their performing arts career along with, um, yeah, a, a career and a work, a lifestyle that works for them. So we have a young entrepreneur with us today. Ebony, can you start by telling us a bit about what you do with Youthful Arts Expressions? And yeah, we'll start there. Yeah. Okay, um, so in Youthful Arts Expressions, we basically run dance, singing and acting workshops for young people aged four to 18 but I am considering opening it up to older ages because I've noticed that there's not many workshops for the older ones as well who mm. are interested in performing arts. Um, so yeah, we run workshops um, from the ages of four to 18. We're based in East London. So we was based in Canary Wharf, but we're now based in Stratford, um, just to make it a bit more local because Canary Wharf is quite far. Um, so yeah, we're based in East London and we work with a range of young people, um, as I said, all different ages, but we do split up the classes. It's run by young people, um, young people, for example, my age group, so around 20 to about 24 is probably the oldest teacher we have teaching there, because it's also to create opportunities for people who want to teach, to have the opportunity to teach in their craft, in their field. So um, yeah, and it's mainly for me, it's mainly for building confidence, as well as allowing young people to discover new creative skills that they didn't know that they had, or building on their skill that they know that they have. I love yeah. that. And yeah. there's there's lots that I want to come back on just with your um, your intention and your goals and your mission, which I can see this comes across straight away from, from the moment that we um, kind of connected when it, when it came to you coming on the podcast, I could see that. So that's something that I definitely want to explore with you. But will you start by telling our audience a bit about where you live, your cultural background, your family dynamics growing up, um, yeah, and how the arts inspired you? Okay, so I live, I grew up in East London, Newham. Whoop, whoop. Um, <laughs> so yeah, East London, Newham, that's where I grew up, that's where I was born, raised. My cultural background is actually um, Jamaican and St Lucian. So my dad is fully Jamaican and then my mum is Jamaican and St Lucian. So I'm more Jamaican than St Lucian. Um, but that's my background. Um, the family dynamic, I have six siblings, three half siblings, three four siblings. Um, hopefully there could there could be more. Um, yeah, and I'm 20. I um, grew up in a household where I had both my parents together up until the age of 16, and then they split ways, and now they're co-parenting and stuff, which I feel like works very well as well. So that's my yeah, that's my upbringing and my background. Oh, I love that. Thanks for sharing that, and that's um, just really nice for me to hear in the sense of. Um, just being a parent myself um yeah no that's really lovely to hear so um so your parents were together to the age of 16 they split ways where where did your arts and your love for creativity in the arts come into that so my love for creative arts came at the age of 12 I would say to be honest um as I have I have mentioned before that 
I grew up in a family in terms of like extended family as well as my home family in a family that's very creative like we're all doing some sort of music dance photography art some sort of creative arts and so I've literally grown up around that and seen that and so for me it was just a thing of okay let me give it a go let me try it and so one summer I actually signed myself up for um I signed myself up for it was a youth theatre in Stratford, Stratford Circus or something, you know, that them summer programs. Yeah. And I signed myself up and I was like, oh my gosh, I really like this. And then I had an older cousin um called Brandon who used to do a lot of performances and just seeing him do it and see how far it brought him, I was like, let me give this a go. So I gave it a go. And then I was like, okay, mum, I really like this. And plus I was really shy. Um like I think I still am kind of. But yeah, I was really shy back then. And I um basically signed myself up for the confidence side of things and then I re- I, like I liked it and then they, they told me about the opportunity of youth theatre in Stratford um the actual Stratford theatre and I was like okay let me sign myself up from there I stayed there until I was like 17 and it just literally helped with my confidence I got so many opportunities to perform on stage to I unlocked um creativity within myself of the creative writing like I didn't know I was good at writing poems until I started that um stuff like singing I can sing but I never really used to sing that much but th- my, this one director called Darnell Shakespeare who I'm still in contact with today always used to like be like okay Ebs can do this Ebs can do that let's get her to do it and it kind of forced me to get out there creative like creatively and so yeah my love for it just grew from there and I was like I really like performing on stage I really love what performing arts is doing for me and it was something to look forward to out of school hours as well because I wasn't really a fan of school but it was like okay I've got something that I actually want to do outside of school so yeah so you your entry into performing arts that stands out for you is finding a summer youth program was that funded by um like the theatre or did you have to fund that yourself did you have to pay to be um, a part of that? It was it wasn't fully funded, so we still had to contribute something, but it wasn't as expensive as it should have been. Mm. Um, I can't remember the exact price. I think it was like thirty pounds for two weeks, which was pretty cheap considering it was like all day events. We had one day where we went to, um, oh, I forgot the university now, Rose Bruford. We had one day where we actually went to the uni that was kind of covering the program and stuff. And so I feel like thirty pounds is pretty cheap to pay for all of those events that we did in those two weeks. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah. And to me, that's just um, stands out of how important it is to have programs like that who are accessible for children from, um, you know, from families who don't make as much money, basically, from yeah. who aren't middle class. That's what I'm trying to create as well, because my thing, I'm trying to make it affordable as well as getting the best out of what they can whilst it's being affordable, because I feel like money can be an issue sometimes to get young people involved in certain things. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and gosh, and that's a whole other conversation and something mm. that really um, definitely is important to me as a business owner um, with arts and children in education. Um, so you had this director, you, you found this opportunity with your local youth theatre programme and they brought out of you things that you and talents that you didn't know that you had. So your creative writing, your voice um where are you now or where where are you in terms of performing like what did that nurture are you you we know that you've come on to create youthful arts expressions but are you going down the performing arts career as doing performing for the love of performing yeah so I actually um I went to college I studied performing arts level three as well um I only stopped it recently well I wouldn't say stopped. I still do creative arts a lot outside, but I kind of had to put it on hold because I went to university and at university, I'm not actually studying performing arts. I'm studying childhood and youth studies, which kind of correlates with the whole performing arts, young people kind of thing with my business. Mm -hmm. Um, So I kind of, um, and that's in Northampton and in Northampton, they don't really have much creative arts opportunities. And so I had to keep coming down to London for that. Um, So in terms of like, I would still go to dance classes. I would still, um, even the summer just gone, I literally had a performance then. Um, So I'm still performing. I'm just not like auditioning for as much things as I would have when I was like 16, 17, 18 kind of thing. Because university has taken up a lot of my time as well as having my own company. But I am still putting myself out there 
in different aspects so anytime there is like an audition that I can actually go to and can can commit to I will do it still um but I'm just not in training as such as hardcore as I was like a year ago I'd say yeah so you're still currently studying is that right yeah I'm in my last year so you're studying and you're running a business at the same time was you running your business how long have you been running your business for um it's only been since February okay so it's still quite new so that's like six months or so yeah that's amazing that yeah. you number one are running a business whilst um uh, being at university like what a way to build a foundation and also that your degree really does sound like it complements your yeah. work and your vision in the arts um what brought you to the point of setting up youthful um, arts expressions so it's funny because it wasn't my intention was to never set up a business it was literally um because okay another another thing that I do is I do homeschooling right. so during the during the pandemic there was a lot of like um parents who were like oh I need my kids like I need a tutor for my kids and things like that and this was something that I used to do and so I wouldn't say I'm a qualified tutor but I do have the knowledge for certain subjects that I can teach and so I was doing that and one thing I realized was that most kids that I was teaching loved doing performing arts and so I was like if they're doing homeschooling it's a bit unrealistic to just do drama by themselves or to do you know performing arts by themselves so I was like let me set up a club where it's like once a month they'll come like interact with other people um and just do drama together because at the end of the day homeschool kids because it was homeschool kids and kids that actually went to school but were doing it online as well so I was like in between both of that um, them. so I said let me just set up a club once a month and then I just did it once and I was like okay cool maybe like the parents are like when's the next one and I was like okay I'll do it again like once a month because that's all I could commit to at the time and then it ended up just building and building and I was like I actually really love doing this it's helping me as well as helping the people who work with me as well as helping the young people as well and then I just I was just like okay let me just get this business registered and make it become a thing and now we're doing weekly classes starting from actually this Wednesday um, at weekly classes face to face yeah congratulations <laughs> thanks you know and I love that and you know what I really love about that is kind of how you have an idea how we put ourselves out there how we have ideas of how things can grow sometimes that's just by having the idea of spotting a need sometimes that's by people asking you know can you do this and it seems like Mm. there's been such this like give and take with um you know someone having a need presenting Mm. you with that need and you going along with it and growing something from there that works for you I really love that exploring how things like that happen. I think our relationships just being able to with ourselves, trusting our, having the self-worth, like you said, you know, I don't have, I'm not a qualified teacher, but I um, can teach certain areas. You have that confidence. That's so important because so many of us, just human beings in general suffer from self, you know, low self-worth. We always yeah. are saying I'm not good doubt enough ourselves. for this. Yeah, yeah, we doubt ourselves. And actually then you have um, women who, when compared to men, doubt ourselves a whole lot more. If we don't mm. feel like we're, you know, at least 100% qualified or 90% qualified, we'll say no to an opportunity. And there's like statistics yeah. out there that share this. Whereas men, if they think that they can, um, or majority of men in this in this study that was done, I'll have to find it and link it below. Majority of men, if they think that, yeah, there's some parts of this I can fit, they say yes and they go and do it. So I love yeah. the fact that you as a young person, person has said yes to opportunities because clearly you believe that you can and that you have something to offer yeah. um so yeah I find that I find that really interesting and and I'd love to kind of explore that more with you as the podcast episodes goes on but then I kind of want to pivot back to your performing arts as well so you're studying at university mm-hmm. you've set up your um company and you yeah. have um, and you're performing at the same time occasionally going on auditions how set are you in that in that performing arts world like how are you finding your auditions where are you at with that so it is difficult because I did stop for a year due to the pandemic and so it was like really hard to even join anything because Muffet was open 
um so it was quite hard and I did find it a struggle going from perform like doing performing arts in college to going to university where I'm just sitting down listening to someone talk at me as like I'm a very active person and it was like like yeah I understand the degree is amazing and stuff but performing arts is me so going to that was very difficult and so going to auditions and like having a year out with not doing any performing arts and stuff was very hard um but I had to keep what I did was I had to keep on top of myself so during the pandemic I was learning monologues even though I'm not going anywhere I'm not doing anything with it but it was like I'm doing self-tapes just in case um I was learning routines because dance was never really my strong point even though I did used to do dance a lot but it was never like oh I'm a dancer it was more I'm I'm an actress that's what I do so um I like just I kind of just developed on my own and I was like okay I've got a back garden we're not doing anything outside let me just do what I can learn a routine record it for myself learn a monologue like talk to people who are in the creative arts world see what they're doing see how I can improve on this monologue learn this script stuff like that and I kind of just like kind of taught myself in that year that I was out and I did actually go for an audition recently to um, MN Academy. It's like a film academy place. And I actually got it, got the, the place to go to their academy. And I was like, so happy because I was like, I haven't been acting in so long. Like, I didn't know. But um, but yeah, it was, it is difficult because it's not something that I'm doing every day compared to what I was doing before. Um, and it can make it difficult when you're not constantly in training. But I suppose me... Like there's so many resources out there, you can do it yourself as well. So mm. I guess it just it just kind of depends on that, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as long as we are working on our craft one way or another, and that and I really admire that. That's you know some level of commitment to be able to pick up a monologue and learn it and t- teach yourself a dance routine. Especially with resources like YouTube out there, like those things are your friend when it comes to still working on your craft. But um, I also really yeah I mean the work that you do if you're working with children anyway it's really good um a a good way to still build on your craft and be ready Mm -hmm. to go out in the world of um performing on stage or tv if that's what you wanted to do and I know not everyone who gets into a a creative arts-based business does want to be a performer but I also know a lot of performers still do want to build that and not give that Mm. up so going back to your business, you you said you started in February and you registered pretty much straight away. That's a really interesting conversation to have, although it would be very useful to hear um, or for anyone who is starting a business, kind of that relationship between starting something up and probably I'm just, I feel like relationship is my favourite word today. Um, <clears throat> it probably makes no sense in that context, but starting something up and then deciding whether you want what kind of route you want to go down in in, in terms of what kind of business it is or what how how you are showing up in the um legal way you you know being self-employed having being a charity being a social enterprise being a limited company that can be a whole minefield in itself figuring that out yeah can you tell us a bit about what that was like for you so um I well I didn't register straight away but it so I started in February and I only just registered about two months ago so then was that like summer holidays around July or something I only registered then because um what it is I've been working from the age of like 15 I've been working with my uncle Dwayne who um has used to run well he still does he runs these I can workshops with young people like building up their self-esteem and their mentality to say I can do things I can do that Mm. um as well as he's a producer so he created music for that so yeah I was having a conversation with him and he was um he was saying how our ebbs you should he calls me ebbs like everyone calls me ebbs so yeah he um, he was like um can you you should register your business because you might as well like make it legit and I was just like like what's that so he kind of broke it down for me and then I was like okay cool so I went on I think it was gov.uk searched up all the different names I did study business studies in year 11 so like as a GCSE so I did um some of the names I was familiar with like sole trader self-employed social enterprise and I was like oh, okay cool I remember this it's all coming back and then I decided to register as a limited company and um I think that was 
purely because I saw that if anything happens it's not all on me it's like on the business kind of thing mm. so I guess that kind of pushed me to like because I was like, I, like I'm still young I, I'm still trying to find my way through so let me not take on all the responsibility um and then from there once I had registered put all my details in and it got confirmed I was like okay I'm registered now and little by little on the journey it was like um there was new things coming in so I would get a letter about tax and I'm like (laughs) okay now I have to do tax and things like that so as the journey went on I've kind of just had to pick up and learn and discover all these different things that comes with registering a business because it's not easy like I was even telling my two best friends the other day I was like this is the behind the scenes work is not easy and you just kind of want to like for me I just want to do the the workshops I don't want to do the stuff like behind the scenes but I guess it comes with it and it is very difficult but as I said as the journey goes on I'm discovering okay you have to do this you have to do that and um I recently just got myself a mentor who's got a registered business and so she's kind of walking me through things that I need to do to make sure I've got it and so that when it comes to the end of the year I'm not like rushed with all these like paperwork and stuff um as well as my degree also helping me because working with young people you have to have certain things in place as well so there's certain things that we learn on my course where it's like you need to have your risk assessment you need to have your safeguarding policies you need to have this in place and it's like okay now I'm slowly working my way through what I need to do behind the scenes but there is a lot of behind the scenes work that you need to do compared to like in front of the young people kind of thing yeah so it is very hard (laughs) yeah that I mean that 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 there really is and I resonate with lots of that I mean I love doing the creative stuff I love pulling the the lesson plans together and going out Mm. delivering it but there is a whole you know there's a lot of work that goes into running that and getting to that point and a lot of the time with limited companies you kind of either get to a place where you're turning over the revenue and it kind of makes sense from a tax perspective to um, register your company as a limited uh, limited or you like you said there's that protection when you register a company it becomes a legal entity in its own right and therefore yeah. the liability falls on the company and that is very um yeah nice and, and comforting and reassuring to have when you're yeah. running a business but then you like you said you kind of have to learn you go uh, along the way as to what's expected of you as a director of a company Um, and you have to make sure you're doing that properly and you're getting that right and a lot of that is making sure you have your financial hat on and if you don't have a financial hat like for example me I didn't have that financial hat I came from um, a family where really and truly growing up the money that my mum got was benefits that's all I you know I knew about yeah. going to the post office and that my mum had to go to the post office but I had no clue when it comes to p- pricing putting value on your your service yeah. there's a lot of work that I would do for free for the longest time and then yeah, yeah kind of then starting to work out um rates profits um investing in your 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 products or service yeah so yeah and I'm sure and I kind of you're still um you know at the start of that journey and there's a lot there's lots more for me to learn who's probably a bit further ahead in terms of business and and that experience and I I still feel like there's loads to learn so the fact that you've got a mentor is amazing that's really important I de- I've got a mentor I've got a few mentors and I definitely recommend to anyone who was getting started or um in a similar place if you don't have a mentor how I mean tell us how much has the mentor kind of helped you has your mentor helped you um so yeah I only just got this mentor about a month ago um so it's been it's been early stages but at the moment like just the idea of having her there to kind of be like oh Ebony have you looked at this have you um got your five-year plan have you got your one month plan like just giving you that push it definitely definitely helps because there's only so much I can remember to do as well as like because I am studying because I am um a young person as well trying to live life as well as like have a business um so it does it does keep you on track and it kind of 
yeah it, it definitely does keep me on track and just having her as a mentor because she's also the person who um not owns the building but she's the person who I like rent out the spaces from for the workshops that like now that we're in Stratford so mm-hmm. she like we have like a good close contact where it's like okay we'll meet up once a month and we'll go through this that and that together and things like that because she was also saying how she was in that position and how like it's nice to have people to kind of guide you along the way because if you're trying to do it all alone like, mm. like you can't do everything all alone it's it's just a bit impossible like even for me um doing doing this business I've had to have one of my best friends create the leaflets because it's like she's good at doing that I'm not very good at creating leaflets so you're always going to need people in your team to help you because you can't do everything by yourself so yeah it's definitely definitely having a mentor is beneficial because it keeps you on track it also keeps you sane for the days that you probably just want to give up um and it just helps along the way in terms of like they're running because she's running her business it's just a bit more like okay cool we're on the same page here we're, we're both both basically kind of doing the same thing so we can kind of check up on each other so mm. it does definitely help <laughs> like, I recommend it 100%. So I would also just like to jump in for anyone who's um, on their journey and they're studying at the same time to get a book called it's called Student Entrepreneur by um, Junior Ogunyemi um, I hope I've pronounced his surname properly. He um, started a business while he was a u- university student. And yeah, his book that he created is amazing. I just feel like he's really broken down how to start a successful business in, in very, uh, if the word, layman's terms, if that's the right phrase I'm using, it probably isn't. Um, but yeah, that book is amazing. I will link it below. And do you have any kind of resources that you would recommend, Ebony, that you've found in your journey that you think, you know, I would love to share with someone else? Um, I don't think I do. How about no. business planning? Where did you kind of, did you come across any templates for writing a business plan? Um, no, I actually haven't. That's actually going to be... Um, one of the next things that I'm doing with my mentor because she told me to set a I think it was one month three months and a one year plan or something Mm. and that's something that I've noticed that comes up a lot like oh what's your business plan and so how I've started it is basically just a spider diagram (laughs) like I haven't even used any resources on the internet but with regards to um things like what was it there was something like um risk assessment for example yeah I've had to use templates or stuff like that because I really wouldn't know where to go from from scratch so I yeah templates definitely do help but I'm trying to think of any resources I don't know nothing comes to mind right now (laughs) how did you find kind of pricing your service are you in a comfortable place are you in a good place with that do you feel like you've kind of arrived where you know arrived at a point where you know like this is the price for my classes or this is the price for a child per head um you know yeah so when it when it came to prices I was actually oh like I was actually okay with that only because from let's say young I I have definitely had this entrepreneurial spirit (laughs) in me where it's like um yeah where like when I was younger I used to actually I see this thing where I was playing outside and I found this flower put it in a bottle and I put water in it and I was like this is perfume and I was selling it around to everyone and from then I kind of knew how to price up my things because my mum was like okay if you buy these containers for I think it was five for a pound or something and how much are you like how much are you putting in to actually make it nothing so just try to sell more than what the container is and that's your profit kind of thing so from then she kind of taught me that and then that was at my foundation and then I suppose when I went to secondary school and even though you're not supposed to be selling stuff I was selling my little crisps and my sweets and stuff like that and I guess it it just kind of came like common knowledge to me um and so pricing my classes it was kind of a thing of okay how much am I paying for the space how much am I paying like my staff and then how much am I paying myself Mm. and then kind of like price it all together like that so that's how I've worked out my classes um and as time goes on it's more just a thing of like now I'm trying to look at for example packages so okay it's 10 pound for one class but it could be 100 pound for 10 classes for the term Mm. or I can give you like a 20 percent discount if you've got siblings like that kind of thing there so it kind of just came naturally to me to kind of price it but in an affordable 
so, like in a way that's affordable and not too expensive yeah that's really um I love the fact that you had that entrepreneurial knowledge and that experience from young and I love the fact that your mum helped you with that and <laughs> yeah. kind of supported that project I think that's a question that I'm gonna have to ask in more podcasts is like that first entrepreneurial spirit that um, yeah. we had if we if any at all um so Ebony is 86 years old or a ripe old age. You can choose a number. Can you imagine yourself at that ripe old age? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us, she's in our favourite spot. She's in her favourite spot in the whole wide world. Can you tell us where she is, what she's doing and what she is reflecting on? So all the things that she has achieved to her life to date so far, in her life to date yeah. so far a very big question <laughs> um so I'm I'm a big person and I'm reflecting on everything that I'm yeah okay where are you first of all when you're reflecting standing in the wind somewhere if that's your favorite place on it could not might be a room <laughs> where I'll are definitely you definitely be near water I love the sound of water mm. like and the wave <laughs> I love that give yeah, me too actually and um and it's funny, I think like everyone I've asked so far is standing near water somewhere. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> what 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 are you thinking about? Like what have you achieved in your life when you're looking over and you're having a thought about your life to date so far? What what's happened? Okay, so I would have achieved a successful um performing arts company. And the my version of success would be that the young people that have been involved in that company have now gone on to do like bigger things in terms of like performing on big stages or just the idea that even if they leave there with confidence built that that in itself is already an achievement for them so that would be my idea of success and that the people who work in that company um would have also gained as much experience to go out there to be able to teach in different companies as well so that would be my version of success um I would have I would have performed on big stages at least five times at least five um and um I would say also, another thing I want to have is, at, like, I want to open a cafe. So hopefully, well, not hopefully, by then, I would have opened the cafe and I may not be running it. Someone else may be running it. But either way, the cafe will be open. Um, I would have a family as well. Um, yeah, that's all that comes to mind right now. So you're an entrepreneur and you have multiple streams of income because you've had your performing arts school and you have your cafe mm -hmm. and possibly more. So bringing it back to now, Ebony, okay. the age that you are now, is there anything that you would have told your younger self any advice that you would give your younger self about making, um, about the process, about the journey? Is there anything that you feel like you could have done differently or should have done differently given what you know now? Um, I would say I wish I had started my business earlier. Really? Like I really, I really wish I had started it earlier because, yeah, I don't, yeah, I just really wish I started it earlier. Um, and... Oh, I don't know. What else would I say to my younger self? I would say probably just like kind of don't stop with the performing. As I said, I had that year where I kind of, a year or two, where I kind of just stopped. I would say just don't stop because, yeah, that's my happy place, one of my happy places. So, yeah, <laughs> that would be it. Amazing. Can you tell us where we can find your work, where we can support you? Okay, so I've got a website. Um, it's called, um, so if you type in www.youthfulartsexpression.com, that's just all one word. Or you can check us out on Instagram, again, youthful.arts.expression. Um, it will be on Instagram. Or you can find my personal page on um 
EBZZ underscore XO. And yeah, that's me. I've also got a homeschooling page actually um, <laughs> on Instagram, which is home.school.uk, where I kind of just post like tips for parents who are homeschooling or just tips for parents in general um, on how to maybe teach certain sessions and stuff. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> and as a fellow homeschooling mum, or I was, um, that sounds like it. It's a, well, it is really useful. I think the homeschool community, in fact, I know the homeschool community is a very large community. It's growing all the time yeah. with people, parents realizing that, you know, school and the way that we do school, unfortunately, isn't for everyone. And school is not moving fast enough with the, t- the how fast times are changing and the things that we need to support our children with. And mm. yeah, my child got to, my eldest son got to a point where he said to me, Mum, I feel like if I stay in school, I'm not going to have a bright future. And we went down the homeschooling route with him. And it's something that I would never um, look back. I I wouldn't change it. He's homeschooling supported him and he's a happy, well-rounded child as a result. Um, So, yeah, I know it's not for everyone. I have another child that sounds like his worst nightmare being homeschooled. But yeah, (laughs) yeah, it's not for everyone. No. And the homeschooling community is a really nice community to work with. The last thing I would say is that I am, honestly, I am very religious. And so, honestly, I couldn't have got to this point if it wasn't for God, <laughs> like, bringing me through. It's not an easy journey running a business and doing mm-hmm. all of that stuff. But honestly, without without God by my side, I couldn't have done it. And you need to have a good support system, a good support system. Do you know what? That's something that I would usually cover in um, the podcast episode. So, you know, talking about our faith and how um, yeah. faith kind of shapes us. And I know that's like different for different people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that question. For me, I'm not so religious, but I'm very spiritual. And I definitely believe in like co-creating with, um, I would say, you know, some people call God, some people call the universe. I'm quite flexible, I guess, with that. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'd love that. And I'm, and do you know what? Perhaps we're just touching it now. Like, so your faith yeah, has not? been a strong driver. <laughs> yeah. Your- yeah. Definitely. It's been, it's been them times when you really just want to just be like, yeah, okay, let me just leave it kind of thing. It's like having that support system from church people, Christians, um, as well as, as well as just remembering, okay, cool, God's going to get me through this. Okay, when one door closes, another one is definitely going to open because it's like, there, there's going to be times where it's like, okay, this is really, this is challenging. Like there was one time where I was like, where am I going to get a building from to hold, to hold these workshops that are affordable? Because I don't want to be spending 500 pounds for like two hours and then having to charge everyone a ridiculous amount of money. So it was just like, you get to them points where it's a bit, it's a bit difficult. And honestly, yeah, it was definitely God that helped me as well as having a good support system. As I said, my mom, my dad, my siblings, um, my best friends, directors that I had worked with ages ago, like Jan, Darnell, um, just family and everything like that. It all, all those little things from different places definitely help create that structure and help you to kind of go on. Cause as I said, no one can do it by themselves. I mean, you can do it by yourself, but sometimes you need that support. Like, you definitely need that support to kind of pick you up kind mm-hmm. of thing so yeah well, I go so far as to say no one does do it by themselves even if you think that you are doing something by yeah. yourself you're not even down to the laptop that you're on or the table that you're sitting on someone had to make that chair someone came yeah. up with the idea, a team of people brought it together so I think like moving away from that narrative of having I'm alone and I have to do this single-handedly as quick as possible <clears throat> mm. moving away from that as quick as possible is really um key because the sooner you realize that n- no woman no man is an island the easier it is for you so yeah Yeah. I definitely support that um working together the power and the teamwork and I do believe as well and I call it co-creating I believe that I just follow my dreams I follow my ideas and somehow all the time um when I'm ready the teacher appears and and I and I put that down to you know a bigger a bigger force at play it's not it's not just me it's being there's something else at play here so yeah do you have any books that you would recommend on spirituality or faith for someone who um what you've just said resonates with um um, I'm just I'm just looking oh actually mm, okay 
you're gonna have to give me a second because I need mm-hmm. to like see the title I think it's called when there's a it's not for faith mm-hmm. but there's a book that is called when a students work work for c students mm-hmm. and that book basically covers um it covers the idea that not like oh, okay I don't want to make it sound bad but it's, it's it says in the title when a students work for c students yeah. it's kind of covering that thing of like don't be so hard on yourself even if you're not achieving the grades that you feel like you're going to get because either way you can still make it in life okay kind of thing that that in a nutshell is what the book talks about in terms of faith though um I would say well it is generally the bible for me Mm. it's um the bible and then there is something called boundaries as well by cloud and town townsend yeah it's called um boundaries which kind of just helps you set boundaries in life and in general because you don't want to be draining yourself (laughs) in this life honestly um and it just helps you to make yeah boundaries it just helps you to make make your yes be yes and your no be no (laughs) kind of thing I love Uh, that and finally when it comes to the bible I'm not a bible reader myself but I do know there's like different kinds of bibles and yeah what bible would you recommend so I actually read the king james version Mm -hmm. of the bible but for anyone who is probably like new christian or probably discovering their faith um I would say niv version which is the new international version because it kind of it's basically in more English and easier to understand if you're just reading it for the first time and stuff and I would say never just read the Bible just like oh I'm gonna read it from the beginning to end because it's not a storybook like that it's more like you need to pick out certain scriptures so you get a Bible that kind of breaks it down for you and not expect to kind of just know what everything <laughs> is being said in there kind of thing yeah it'd be lovely to get you back on in the future and see how things are progressing for you once you've graduated and yeah how you continue to navigate performing and your your business goals Mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us Ebony we will link um you know certain things that we've mentioned if you want more details we'll link where to find Ebony in the show notes So I'd just like to thank our listeners. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask, please do drop us an email. And also, um, yeah, if there's anything else that you'd like us to cover or you found anything that was particularly useful, please do drop me an email. All linked in the show notes below. Drop me an email and it will help us shape our next episode.